two weeks ago when I made my last new video, I really had some hope that new stock could turn around in the last few months this year, especially when I heard that China had the plan to lift its dynamic zero COVID policy and especially when I heard that the US inflation is slowing down and the CPI data shows uh, some positive progress after the Federal Reserve hiking their interest rate for so many times. Uh, in Neil's Q3 financial report, it has this very positive, very optimistic business outlook. But after just the two weeks, what I had hoped that the COVID restric restriction lifting has changed dramatically in China. That'll change everything about Neil's optimistic business outlook in 2022 Q4 in the last quarter of this year. I think it is really, really difficult to the point, it almost impossible for Neil to uh, reach the target if of its Q4 delivery numbers. In this video, first, let's take a look at what Neil had hoped to achieve in the last quarter of 2022 and what, what what's its business outlook for this quarter as far as uh, vehicle delivery goes. And then let's see what is happening in China. What about the lockdowns and why here are suddenly so many protests? So that's all find out in this video. So first of all, this is the Neil's Q3 2022 financial re report. And in this report, New actually had a pretty optimistic and bold business outlook for 2022 Q4 because maybe they have heard some 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 news about China's lifting its dynamic dynamic zero COVID policies in Q4 or at least starting to lift some of the restrictions and that'll boost the cu cu customer's confidence in purchasing a car in the plans that they may have delayed uh, because of the uncertainty of throughout this year and finally they may have some confidence to the economic recovery in the coming year. So I, I guess Neil's business outlook are based on those assumptions and those uh, news. So for the first quarter of 2022, the company expects delivery of vehicles that between 43,000 and 48,000 vehicles, representing an increase of approximately 71.8% to 91.7% from the same quarter of 2021. And they also estimate the total revenue will be uh, repre representing an increase of approximately 75.4% to 94% uh, 94.2% from the same quarter of 2021. The, all of that are uh, basically impossible to achieve because of what is happening in China right now. So massive lockdown process protests are ongoing right now in China. And this is a this article from CNN is a pretty good summary of the situation there in China right now. So this article, China's lockdown protests, which you, what you need to know. First of all, uh, let's see, why are Chinese people protesting? So basically the protests were triggered by a deadly fire last Thursday in uh, Urumqi, the capital of the war western of the far western region of Xinjiang, and the fire killed at least the ten people and injured nine in an apartment building, leading the leading to public fury after videos of incident appears to show lockdown measures had delayed the firefighters from reaching the victims. And alleged to people familiar with that matter, those gates of each units are um, are sawed like use steel bars to to lock to hard lock that people from inside cannot be opened because the, of this so-called covid measures uh, it stopped people from escaping from their unit, units and if you're familiar with the communities uh, neighborhoods in china that a few apartment buildings are uh, com compressing into a small community and each of the community has only one entrance because also because of the COVID lockdown measures and the, those doors are like fenced with, with steel plate and other like other other obstacles to lock the entrance from a vehicle to stop vehicles from entering and the fire trucks are uh, have were having a hard time accessing the building actually it was on fire and that caused at least as in this news set, 10 people injured, 10, 10, 10 people died and nine injured. And the, the youngest of among the 10 that that people was just a five year old. That was, um, and what's even more devastating is that the city has been under lockdown for more than 100 days. Guys, that, that was 100, more than 100 days. They were locked at home, doesn't allow to get out of their, their homes for uh, more than 100 and nine days, uh, I think by the end of 
that the, the, the day the fire disaster actually was happening. And with residents unable to leave the region and many forced to stay home. So video, a lot of videos on the internet showed that the Wumqi residents marched to a government building and chanting for the end of the lockdown on Friday. The following morning, the local government said if left the, the lockdown in stages, but did not provide a clear time frame to address the protests. And right after the devastating fire, the local fire station official announcement to address the citizens saying that a part of a big part of, of this tragedy is because of the, the residents in this building does not have strong self rescue skills and they're not because they are not familiar with the entrance and access of the building and the door, the gates of the, um, the, the apartment building and the communities are unlocked is because of they are not capable of escaping from this building. Very, very shameless. And that's one of the biggest reasons why this the nation, the Chinese, all the Chinese people are like very, very angry because of this. So that announcement actually failed to quell the public anger and the protests rapidly, rapidly spread beyond Xinjiang with residents in cities and universities across China also taking to the street, streets. So this map shows how many cities in China start to protest, protest and mourn the victims during this devastating fire. Actually, these cities are all, almost all China's largest cities, including Be including Beijing, Shanghai, Tianjin, Hangzhou, and Guangzhou, Chongqing, Chongqing. CNN has verified 20 demonstrations that took place across 15 Chinese cities, including the capital Beijing and the financial center Shanghai. Th these two are the largest the cities in China. And in Shanghai on Saturday, hundreds gathered for a candle night vigor on uh, Wurmuchi Road, named after the Xinjiang city, to mourn the fire victims. Many held up blank sheet of white papers uh, and a symbolic protest against the censor censorship and chanted, need human rights, need freedom. So some even shouted out for Xi to step down and the China Chinese Communist Party to step down. So China's uh, zero COVID policy has been felt particularly accurately in Shanghai because earlier this year, Shanghai locked down for more than two months. You, don't, you know, in China, there is no freedom of speech and the surveillance systems and the crackdown to dissents are very, very severe. So these kind of protests are unheard of since 1989. And this is definitely going to be a key moment of China's history. So as investors or potential investors, uh, I think uh, Neo is going to have a lot of uh, difficulties in 20, 2022 Q4 because well, what is happening in China right now is impacting not just the, the politics, but also the economy of China. As I mentioned, this might not be a very good time for vehicle deliveries, but this is definitely going to be a key moment or a milestone in China's history. So um, yeah, uh, that's what is happening in China right now. And it just uh, looked look to me impossible for Neil to achieve his uh, outlook in the last quarter of 2022. And hopefully the strict the COVID policy will end even sooner than expected. All right, that's everything I want to share today. If you're interested in Neo, Xpeng, Liaodo, um, and other Chinese stocks, and if you're interested in this kind of news, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you next time.